Hello, and welcome to another day in our 21 daily practices, honoring the energy of the solstice coming up. And um, I'm Kelly Bonsell, and I'm going to share with you some visual meditation practices. I think everything we've been doing in this uh, series can be considered some form of a creative meditation. Um, but these are some that I've learned and um, I've brought into deep inquiry practice and I've also used just for kind of letting everything go and finding that stillness and um, space in my mind. And so if there is an inquiry to be brought in, it would be what happens when I allow there to be space? I have them looking at my little writing here. Um, what comes up for us when we allow space? And so that's pretty open. So as you move into these fun visual meditation practices, just be open to what magic might come in. Um, All right, so some visual meditations. Um, I've got, I'm using going to use quite a few different things, um, here. So I've got some different pens and a pencil marker. I've got colored pencils. I have watercolor and my brushes. I've got some markers here and I think that will be, that will be good. So the first one I want to share with you is a watercolor meditation and I'm just going to label these. And again, the idea is to just consider what comes up when you allow space. And, you know, when I think about meditation in the traditional sense, the idea of just letting your mind be free from thought and how for me, and I'm, not a dedicated med meditator, but um, I'm trying to be, and that's hard. And so I've been told just to let the thoughts come, not identify with them, let them pass. And I find that if I can do a creative practice, just like if I do a guided meditation, it helps me. Um, and eventually I hope to get to where I can just sit and be still, but I like this too. Okay, so what the comes up? So things might come in and that's okay. So watercolor meditation, I've got just a smaller or kind of a medium round brush and I'm just letting myself go with whatever color I feel called to. And I'm gonna come around making concentric circles. They may touch, they may not. And when something happens like this wet, touch that wet, I might even just stop and witness that happening. And this time I want that to happen even more. So I'm taking, just kind of added some water to my brush. Oh, love this. And just letting myself be in the space of the paint doing what it does. Okay, so there's the circles. I also sometimes will continue with the circle, but I do something with my brush that feels really good for me. So when you have a round brush like this and you touch it lightly to your paper, it makes a thin line. And when you press harder, it makes a thicker line. So sometimes I will go and vary the pressure of the line. And sometimes I will just do that in lines. And that's the meditation. And almost like a heartbeat. 
And sometimes I will use the same idea in my circle. So thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Sometimes I'll go in the other direction. And one more watercolor meditation idea is to take clear water, which is kind of fun because you don't know exactly what it's doing. And color. And just touch that color in. And again, just watching what the water does. different pigments and different colors, different types of paint will move and do different things. All right, so there's just some ideas for meditating with watercolor. So this one, <clears throat> is the one inspired by Neurographica. And this one is starts with a sort of a line of discovery. Making sure we want things to cross over. It can be a fast one. And the idea here is to use a process of rounding any corner you have. So whenever two lines intersect, right, you get these points, these corners, right? Even if your line ends up being round. And so the idea here is to round the corners I'm inserting another demo for how to round the corners because as I was watching the video, I realized my hand's kind of covering that up. So I'm going to make it big. So I started by showing that when you make a scribble, right, you have these corners. So the idea is that you kind of draw out a curve and color it in. And it, it's much different if you're making it really small, right, you might not draw it and then color it in, but just to over exaggerate so you can kind of see what I was doing. All right, and then some of the smaller ones, you're gonna just end up maybe not coloring in too much. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Which almost will create like a knot in the um, piece. And so I'm gonna be using a thinner pen for my, to round the corners on this one because it's a small design. And what I find when I get into this, when I'm not talking or teaching it, is that I can just, I mean, thoughts may come in and out, but that process of being able to just let them float on happens really easily and what I have learned the little bit that I have learned about neurographica is that this process can ease stress and tension because it's like you are softening those parts of your thoughts that are sharp and potentially stressful
All right. So once I've gotten and I've curved all the corners, I breathe and kind of look to see if there's any of mist. And then that in itself can be your practice. Um, you can also bring in, um, you know, some paint. This can also become something like a discovery drawing where maybe you look and there's images that are standing out for you. And I'm not gonna complete this one with color, but just so you get the idea. I could also take, you know, colored pencils. Whatever material you enjoy, just the way it looks as it's <laughs> coming onto your paper. So sometimes I just love to see color go onto white paper. With colored pencil, I really love how I can blend it with the amount of pressure to be dark or light and kind of that. It's rough, but it's soft, that texture that it leaves. Um, you can use markers. Right, and just color in with your markers. Um, I tend to really enjoy pattern, so maybe I'm gonna put some pattern into some of these shapes. So you can play with it in that way. And you could make this really big. I'm gonna show you a few things, so that's why I left it here. I'll write the word Neographica if you wanna look it up. Again, I just wanna be clear that this is not this is just inspired by, <laughs> inspired by, but if you want to look it up so you know how to spell it. Um, another thing you can do is you can have a sh shape, a recognizable shape, right? And you can scribble in that and then do your softening all right and then the final practice i'm going to show you today can also be done with any of the materials you have here and this one is inspired by a practice from flora Bully and the creative revolution as was the watercolor meditation and i can't remember she may have called it this <laughs> but i'm calling it i've been calling it soulful scribble it's been a while since i took the class i'm trying I was trying to remember anyway this can be done in lots of different ways i'm going to show you one way of using symmetry and um I have had a lot of fun doing this practice. So what you do on one side, you just try to mirror image on the other side. Sometimes the shapes are easy, like a line. Sometimes they might trick your brain a little bit, like a squiggle. And it's fun to do both because you'll find that that's a meditation itself, just focusing on the line you're making in mirror image. I'm just using a lot of different materials. Oh, I love this practice. <laughs> this made me so happy. All right, and you could go on and on and on. I feel like I have one of these on. Okay, I'm gonna show you another one of these soulful scribbles that I did um, on a whole page, right? <laughs> 
So this one has a lot of scribbles and stuff. And obviously it's not exact, but just the act of knowing what to do next because you've just done it on one side eases and creates kind of a, a back and forth, a flow. So this is, um, these are just some practices to give you some techniques and creative play for a visual meditation. And I'll show you again, just so you can see, we did watercolor meditation. We did this inspired by Neurographica with the softening of the scribbles and a soulful scribble with some symmetry here. Thank you. So I want to just say thanks again for watching um, and I hope that you find some pleasure and space in these um, meditations and I have myself found a lot of value in being able to sit down at a sketchbook when I feel like I just can't sit still and meditate and really gain that stillness and um, space and sometimes clarity and sometimes um, answers to inquiries that pop into my mind as I go. So um, just a lot of magic there and a lot of fun and a lot of play. So enjoy and we'll see you next time.